is in the Dave Coon Senior race. It was his idea to bring the 125s into Supercross. There's a good look at Travis Pastrana. I just spoke with my dad who's been working with him a little bit. He said Travis is very comfortable on this racetrack and knows that all he really needs to do is go out there and just live in the moment. Don't think too much. Don't make any stupid mistakes in the early laps and should be able to win this race. Stefan Roncada now going through his nervous pre-race gyration. There's number 23, Nick Way. See a lot of jerking action there. 32nd board is up. We're almost set for the 125 main event from Las Vegas, Nevada, Sam Boyd Stadium. It is a seller. Glad you could join us on the pay-per-view telecast, the very first live Supercross in the history of the sport. Thank you for helping history be made here tonight. As the 125, 32nd board is now sideways. We are set to go with our main event from Las Vegas. Three riders going down in the first turn, none of the favorites, so uh, what a whole shot by Greg Snell. Looks like he's riding a two fifty. Fonseca is right behind him in second place. A great start for number 28. He's behind him. Remember him as 28. He's been running number one as the defending champion of the 125 East all season. It is a good start for him, but 199 Pastrana sits right there in third, and this is what I talked about. All he wanted to do was get out there, be in contention, be smart, let the race come to him. Look at the great leaping action. A brand new leader in Fonseca just leaped behind Greg Snell. And Pastrana is ready to strike behind Snell. Snell came up short a little bit. He just off the screen there again. Another little mistake. Takes you out of your timing when you get past early like that. He thought he had control of the race. He lost it. Now he's got to contend with Pastrana. Both Snell and Pastrana, two-time winners in their division. And Mayhem behind Pastrana. Well, I just took down Danny Smith. Danny Smith, but that was rather tame. They just went in there and put on a huge rock pass and then rolled that. That, was, that moving can't have happen in the first lap. So you have to be patient when the race comes to you. Number one, play was rather tame. Here's Snell and Pastrana now. Snell back in the lead with Pastrana in second place and Fonseca in the third. Get back to the action. That mechanic there he gets real busy. I don't know how to do anything through there. It's hard to figure out which board is yours, but this is great for Pastrana. He doesn't have to work his way around. Fonseca, uh, yeah, Fonseca rather. He's going to look at what Snell, if he can't do the triple coming up right here, this is where Travis will be able to jump it, get the timing, and make the pass. Well, looks to his left and look at the guy who makes the triple Fonseca to the inside, and he takes the lead. move by Fonseca. Pastrana chose wrong. He was on the left side of him straight away and Schnell kind of closed him off to the edge of the racetrack. Fonseca. Excellent choice to the inside and great reflexes. Fonseca's not giving up either. They avoid rubbing plastic in the corner. Pastrana now the one looking back over his shoulder. Fonseca the black pass. On the dirt line track he spins and keeps control and Fonseca retakes the lead. A one-time winner was the ninth different rider to win this year. He won the last 125 race of the regular season, and that was in Chicago. The crowd still standing on their feet with this great action going underway. This is the first time that Pastrana and Fonseca have had an opportunity to go head-to-head. -head. A little mistake by Pastrana back there. He's starting to get some pressure by Schnell, who's hanging with his face. That is impressive. Now these guys will be able to be out in the clear. They're going to get a big boost off that jump. It sets them up for the triple. They both get over it clean. That time, yeah, that time Schnell gets over it. He wants to stay contention. took a chance right there going for that triple. Several non-champions have won here in Las Vegas. Even before it was a shootout. Here comes Pastrana. Fonseca trying to gauge what kind of move Pastrana's going to make. Riding a little defensive, even though he's fast. Coming through the woods. Pastrana right now needs to settle down, 
got the speed, he can hang. Here's another look. Watch the whoops. Fonseca starts to dance around a little bit right here. Watch his rear end. It's going to swing over and hit the front end of Pastrana. He was on the clutch. The brake kept his balance. Never even had to put his foot down. He even had an opportunity maybe to get by and make a little block pass right there. side-by-side -side battling the whole way. I, I have no idea. Art, usually I'm good at figuring out what's going to happen. I have no idea. Fonseca has answered the challenge of Pastrana. Pastrana may be a little bit surprised right now by that. And you know, Schnell, who's had an outstanding season as a privateer, is right there. Something should happen. And anything can happen between these two. Well, they keep messing with each other and wrecking each other's lines and opportunities, trying to block one another. Schnell can take advantage. He's got to keep doing this triple, though. That's the key. If he doesn't do this triple, Pastrana makes his move on Fonseca. Fonseca trying to come back right there. Chases that little double. Look at Speed up. Makes this look so easy. The crowd is more than standing now. They're stomping their feet, screaming at the top of their lungs. And Travis is once again the center of all that attention. Exciting riders ever to be in this sport, and it's his first year for the professional. Fonseca having the whoops. Schnell trying to take advantage of that. Almost out on the court, almost out on the racetrack right there. As the Estrada is spinning by. A quick jumper, there. well, let's see why. Watch Travis right here. They both get over the triple, but Travis jumps the next double, where Fonseca got a little bit off balance here and had to roll it. Step on by Tana trying to make his way up through the field has just passed David Pinkray. And this is our leader, Fonseca, second, and third, Ron Tana has moved to the point. And we still have lots of laps to go. This is a 50 lap lead event for the shootout. Goes over the double jump, takes the outside. Now this run has enough of a cushion over Fonseca. He's able to take the lines he wants, go wide to get a run of things, and not worry about that front wheel getting in there. Going over his foot. I had a feeling all season long Pastrana would be cheering for this race because it was such a, a spectacular type situation. Stefan Roncada now trying to put the pressure on Snell, number 63. Oh yes, Roncada has caught this back. He's the fastest guy on the racetrack right now. And there's still time to catch the leader. Wouldn't that be something to see Roncada and Pastrana go? Just like Roncada has got to make quick work of Snell and his teammate Fonseca in order to have that chance. The winningest rider of 125 this year, Roncada will be trying to get by the privateer Greg Snell. But Roncada's got to make a move soon here, David, or he doesn't really stand much of a chance of uh, taking it. He matched Pastrana's last lap. Almost. A low 114 to Pastrana's 113.9, so he's definitely on the pace with the leader, but now he's going to have to take different lines right here, possibly to get around. He's going to lose a little bit of time. It's hard to make back up on a guy like Travis. Or a kid, I should say. <laughs> Ron got him back in 98. Got an 11th place start here. He passed five riders on the third lap, and he makes the move into second place. <laughs> Pastrana, Roncada, Fonseca, and Schnell. And there's Roncada trying to hold on to his position now. And he's trying to get close to Pastrana. Pastrana is going to get a pit for it. He says, hey, 
do not relax too much. If he does, Ron Connick can catch him, and it's hard to make the adjustment and start picking the pace back up again. Ron Connick was so confident he could win this race, and he's got eight laps to try to catch Travis Pastrana. Let's check out the pass now of Ron Cotta making it by his teammate. He came from the outside, was able to double that jump in between the whoop section where his teammate rolled through it. Just a little bit better line choice. Planned that all the way down the straightaway before he, he planned that about three corners ahead. So Rakata now in the process of trying to chase down the leader. Is he in sight? Yes, he was in the end of that section as Rakata was entering it. Is Rakata that fast? Yes, he is that fast. Pastrana himself said he's the fastest guy on the track in Chicago. Right. I'll tell you what, towards the end of this race, you're going to get tired, it's sweat in your eyes, it splatters all over the limbs, it's hard to see your line, you get into lap riders, you start to feel the pressure. Ron has got everything to gain right now, and Travis is trying to protect. This is for good pleasure. Ron anyway, two very competent riders. Very steady something, go fast through something that just wasn't even there before. He's got so much aggression. It's difficult to mix the aggression with having to be careful on this hard, slick track, though. right there. He's got an opportunity to pick up two spots. I don't know if he can pick up more. He's not able to do this triple right here. I saw him doing his practice, but if you've got a rider in front of you and you're following him, it's too risky. Touching the inside. That's the advantage going into the whoops. Let's see who comes out of the whoops there. And it's Chris Gosling making a nice move on Nick Way. Pastrana continues to lead out in front as Rakata tries to chase him down. Six. Here's our leader right now, number 199, Travis Pastrana. And here's what happened in the last lap. He did a 114 and a half. Ron Cotta did a 113.4. So he is definitely catching him, and there's still time. Six more laps. That's a heat race. Pastrana will have the pressure on him. Look at that, though. Pastrana now starting to triple, heading into the other triple. Making up tons of time, Ron Cotta is not doing that same timing and he's losing a little bit. That means that he is going so much faster in another section of the racetrack to make that back up and then some. Mr. Excitement. Things happen when he's on the track, there's no question. And here's our second third place rider. Here's the Von Sega and number 63, Greg Schnell, in the battle for third. Well, Fine job battling up front. It takes a lot of energy out of you, though, and then you try to settle back into a pace. You can't really afford to do that because Schnell's still breathing down his neck. Boy, this is a fast. They make it look They're just polished off. There's little knobs and ruts in. Fishtail and side to side, and we've seen what happens if you start to get a little crooked, you're going down right away. Schnell, one of the five first time winners of the 25 season, and of course he got two victories, but his first one probably you'll remember forever and ever because he was in San Diego, then he picked off his very first super cross victory, and look at this, he's going to be responsible to Schnell. This is the battle for the first time he's there. See a little piece of something hanging down from the bottom of Seika's bike. It's a piece of plastic that he picked up to close to the edge of the racetrack and on it probably the foot bag. Not causing any problems right now. Back at the end of the game for some reason could mount and lose your brake. He's probably unaware. For Shea Bentley fans, the champion of the 125 West, he had to go home with 
to the stomach deal and get the whoops. We've got Snell trying to make a move. He's trying the whoops. But he still couldn't get an edge. Pastrana is our leader with the 125 Eastern Champion. Stephon Von Kata trying to... Savas recognized the challenge. Obviously got the signal. Let's pick the pace back up. He's able to stretch his lead out a little bit. Well, that looked a little sketchy there. He barely gets over that triple, over the other triple. That's where he's been able to make up his time. On top. What's it look like trackside, Davy Combs? Well, it looks like this to me. What in the world is Suzuki going to do with Travis Pastrana? I mean, you got Damon Huffman, a 250 factor, right down the starting gate. Huffman is not jumping that triple into the stadium that Pastrana is doing on a 125. Travis is a tall kid. He's going to fit nicely on a 250, but when will it be too soon? And he's such a mature individual, David Bailey. We got a good battle going on with Rock Sellers and Christopher Gossler now. Sellers is currently in fifth. And Nick Way gets into the action as well. Sellers, Gossler 55, and Nick Way number 23. The race within the race. Even though Pasana has a pretty good lead, there's all kinds of action on this track. I haven't seen this in a long time. It looks like a Texas A&M game. The crowd has yet to sit down. I'm sure they're not sit as soon as they do something else is going to happen. Somewhere on the way, it's going to be some of the big town out here. Travis seems to have things under control out front. You just never know. That rider's a mistake. Ron Cotta is back there matching his pace. He's not able to catch him like I thought he might. Travis has stepped it up. What an interesting season this will be. Check out the last time. At that last lap time, Travis picked it up and had a second advantage over Ron Carter, so he's definitely in control here. Let's go back and check out the Pastrana style. Well, there, there's places where you see him riding right on the toes. He's right on his tiptoes on the foot there. There's places on the racetrack, when he's jumping that triple, He's dragging the bottom of the foot and the foot peg. If he had his foot hanging off over the part of the foot peg, he'd break his foot right there. The screen has got to run up the top. The 250 being such a prestigious division, what would you do if you're Roger McCoster and he came to you next year and said, hey, I want to ride a 250. I'm going to get with the big boys. Well, I think there's a thing called too much too soon. In my opinion, Travis is 16. He's got a long career ahead of him. Why not go out Try to get that 125 title, get a number one plate, and then move up. Plenty of time. Plus, Travis he talked about he talked about doing it here. He wanted to ride both classes tonight. I mean, how incredible would that be? Because he'd be getting off the bike, getting onto a 250, and he's got the kind of talent to go out and finish the top five. And my word was that Roger DeConter said he could do it if he won the title, 125 title. He did not win the title, so he didn't get a chance to try. Well, that's motivation to stay in the 125 class next year, win the title, and be able to do that. It's never been done, to my knowledge, to the point that Travis could take it. And that would be perhaps a podium in both classes. And there's no rest after this race. Jump back on 250. The fact that he's even considering it. Pretty mature, pretty confident, good recovery right there, and obviously in great shape. Obviously in great shape. Main event for the 250s with all that power. Final lap coming up. So we've had Jay Bentley, a champion of the West, Ron Cotta, a champion of the East, and possibly one lap goes, and Travis Pastrana, a non-champion, picks off the 125 shootout. So who is the best rider in 125? I have no idea. There's too many. Travis is so close to winning the, the title in the East. This is going to feel great to be able to come out here and go, look, I had the speed to do it. I'm, I'm young. I made a couple of mistakes, but check this out. He's approaching some triples. The crowd is definitely on their feet right now. I want to see some of those freestyle tricks that got him gold medals. Here's the future for Suzuki. Travis Pastrana, his first win in the pro. As he heel clicks for the fans, was a big honor. He backed it right up with a dome appearance and a victory in St. Louis. He's got another triple right here. The crowd is louder all the way around. Oh, come on, show us some more. A phenomenal rookie year. He puts a little nod to the crowd with the heel clicker this time. I think the heel clicker is a little bit safer than some of the other Superman seat grab, Indian Air, whatever the heck he calls all that stuff. I think the heel clicker is the easiest one to do when he's just tired. In such a difficult division, and also there's Lee McCullough, his mechanic. 
and also the uh, shootout. The checkers are waving, and a nice calm roll over the finish line for Travis Pastrana, the winner of the 125 shootout in one of the greatest seasons in 125 history, the front wheelie to celebrate. What a display of balance right there. Be able to stick that thing up on the front brake, balance it on the front wheel. He gets a high five from the Mercado right there. Good sportsmanship. These guys all like each other. Obviously his third career win because it's his first season. And Travis Pastrana now getting some instructions uh, to uh, come on over. I think he was wanting to go out there and ride around the track a little bit more. I think the fans want him to, too. Victory lap, they're saying, no, 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 don't do that. We don't have time. We've got to get that 250 <laughs> main underway. <laughs> yeah. Lee McCullough. And Lee says, I've never had anybody thank me for replacing spark plugs before, but this guy is so polite that uh, he's just a joy to work with. And he goes over to shake hands with the second place punisher, Stefan Roncada, who is uh, just as pleasant a young man. Yeah, it's not going to be long before these guys take the place of Jeremy McGrath in the 250 class. And it's great to see that they already have such a good respect for each other and so much talent and poise on camera at such a young age. Well, he's already got his post-interview all figured out. Let's see what he has. Davey Coombs. <laughs> all right, Travis, never a dull moment with you. Of course not, man. I don't know, I tried to keep it on two wheels, I succeeded this time, and um, you know, I couldn't ask for anything better, I took some risky moves with Ernie, but I feel like I'm learning, I'm getting smoother, and listen to this crowd, man, it's so sweet. Man, I did that, my RM pulled me over that huge trip on the back, no other 125s are doing it, I was like, yes. I know that this is your rookie year, you came in hoping maybe to do all right in the 125 East, you got a couple of main event wins, but you lost that title at the last race in Chicago, now you come out here and you beat the entire country, actually this country and France, in a 125 shootout. Yeah, well thanks, I mean, Stefan Roncada was running pretty much my same base, I just got out of the start a little bit better with my RM, and man, I can't say enough, I'm so excited, I'd like to thank uh, No Fear, my mechanic, Lee McCollum, for helping me out so much, every lap he's like crossed his fingers like, you can do it! I know your longtime mechanic, Jeff Cerna, came out just to watch this race. Your whole family's here. you got to be stoked. Yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out. You know, my mom, dad, some uncles, and uh, any of you watching at home, I don't know if you stayed up this late. East Coast is kind of late, but Jim, Joe, uh, thank you. Okay, Travis Pastrana has animated a talker as he is a rider on the track, that's for sure. Takes uh, the 125 shootout in front of all the champions. As we take a look at the Suzuki results board, Prastrana, Rodkata, and Fonseca on the podium with Greg Schnell in fourth, Brock Sellers, and uh, both outstanding seasons for those two young men. Nick Way in sixth, David Pinkery fought back to seventh place, and for those fans out of the southeast, uh, Shane Bentley unable to participate in the 125 shootout. Let's go to Robbie Floyd.